Hi, my name is Emily, um, and I'm a crafter who's been watching a lot of cross-stitch floss tube videos lately, and a fair number of knitting podcasts. I like to use both of those types of videos as kind of background entertainment while I'm crafting, and so I thought it would be fun to kind of contribute some of my own videos. Um, I do a lot of different crafts, like a lot of different crafts. Um, probably my favorite, like if I was on a desert island, had to pick one craft type of thing, would be knitting. And if I could have two crafts, it would be knitting and cross stitch. But to be honest, I would probably get bored even with just, even with as many crafts as those are, I would probably get bored with them because I like switching things up and trying new things and learning new crafts. Um, so, you know, I've got a lot of different things to talk about. Today, my plan is to show you everything that I'm currently working on, so all my work's in progress. And no joke, I'm sitting on the couch, my pile of things to show you is this tall. Yeah. In my defense, there's a couple really big, almost finished projects in there that really add to the height. There's also a pillow in there, but it's little, so, you know. Um, couch pillow, mind you. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna talk about. Now the thing is I know that not everyone's gonna be interested in all of those crafts. So kind of my plan for this video, and if I do more videos, those videos, is gonna be to talk about them in kind of like chunks and have little buttons along the bottom that you can like click to go to whichever type of craft you're interested in. So I like doing things in alphabetical order. So my plan is to talk about my cross stitch and other embroidery type projects. I've got a black work project going now, so I'm putting that in that group. Um, to talk about my knitting and crochet and any other like yarny type projects. To talk about my sewing, quilting, I guess you could say fabric-y type projects. And then everything else that's not in those categories. So yeah, I do a lot of things. If you are only interested in watching some of those, no hard feelings, click the button and go to that. And thank you for watching. If you've got any questions or comments or I mentioned something in passing that you'd like me to go into more detail on, just let me know in the comments and I will do my best to do that. And if you're here for the long haul, well, let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is my cross stitch and embroidery type projects and I'm noticing it's a little overcast today and the rain is like really picking up so we're gonna hope that the lighting conditions are okay for doing this because yeah so I've got I believe four I've got four projects currently going in this category um, and I'm gonna go through them in alphabetical order by their title it's not the order that I started working on them in but pick an order you know I don't actually remember the order that I started working on some of the things in this pile, so alphabetical it is. So the first thing that I have going on is a Heaven and Earth Designs pattern. It's called Four Heavenly Beasts, and the artwork is by Kaomi Harai. I believe that's, I, I'm guessing that might be how you pronounce her name. And so this, oh, gotta move that backwards. This is what the final picture is gonna look like. Um, I have to thank Carolyn Mazio for talking about her Blue Dragon project because this is by the same artist and that was what got me looking at this um, piece and I really love it. I like how it looks like it looks like they're like in some sort of conference and arguing about something and I think that's really cool and I like that type of thing where you look at it and you go, ooh, I wonder what's going on in there. So I have my piece of fabric rolled up here. Um, it is on 18 count antique white or something Ada it's it's basic and all I've gotten done so far is one oh keep going this is how big the fabric is by the way um, I've got one column done here and it's kind of a short squat column relative to other people's columns oh my goodness that's the back huh, much fail okay I got one column done um, it's, I work, I park and I work in, like I was saying, it's a little short and squat. I park and I work in 20 stitch rows. So the column is 20 stitches wide and a lot of people's columns are 10 stitches wide. And also I'm working with a large, um, large print chart. So it's a little bit shorter in general. There's less on the page, but it's really cool. You can see these two little lines here 
correspond to these, there's two little lines right there. And so you can see this column actually ends right at the rock the tiger's standing on. So that's nifty. Um, it's going to be a long project, but I really like it. So um, it's a lot of fun to do. It's actually my most recent start. Oh, and you may be interested. So I grid, and it's this little metallic stuff. I found it, I have this big old thing of it that I got for like, I don't know what it is. I got it for like five bucks at a thrift store. <laughs> um, and it's it's basically like a little foil ribbon type of a thing. And I like the fact that you can't put your needle through it. The only issue that I have with it that I didn't realize until I started working with it is that it, it kind of stretches when you pull on it a little bit. So I'm not sure how that's going to affect pulling it out after the piece is done. So we'll deal with that when we get to it, and hopefully it won't be too bad. Okay, I'm just going to briefly roll this back up and get it out of the way. So that is work in progress number one. I'll just drop this over the side of the couch and pick it up later. The next piece that I'm working on, and I do, I do a little bit of a rotation. It's at the moment, it's basically I pick a different project every week to work on in alphabetical order because I like things in alphabetical order, um, which helps me with projects that aren't really my favorite right now, like this one. It's a nice project, but it's um, it's my oldest project. I bought it, I don't know, like when I was probably 14 or something, and it was kind of the only one in Joanne's that I really liked and now I'm kind of like eh. but um, it is a dimensions kit it's called morning flight and they the designer they say is Persis Clayton Weirs and it's this little like um, eagle flying in a snowy landscape thing to be honest it's probably gonna end up in my bathroom it just kind of reads like a bathroom piece to me um, but you know I, I had it so I wanted to get it done so I was working on it and it's kind of got a bit of an interesting history in terms of my working on it when I when I first bought it I did a little bit of work not very much and I just kind of started in the middle like at the time I thought that one did um, and worked out and I didn't really I didn't really didn't get very much done on it I did and when I pulled it out recently I did not love it so I decided to do something different I first decided that I was going to do one color at a time and do every single color of that color in the project and work from like the most background color to the most foreground color so that way any kind of overlapping that happened would be in favor of the pieces that were in front and because it's dimensions kit it has things like um, uh, half stitches with a single strand and half stitches with five strands and uh, double stitches with you know full stitches with two strands and so there's, there's a fair amount of texture to it so I thought that would help and I worked on that for a while and then I got to the point where I was doing nothing but slightly varying shades of blue blue is my favorite color but that's a heck of a lot of blue in this piece so at that point, at that point, I had gotten into floss tube and I'd heard about parking and stuff. So I decided to try parking. I really liked it. And so um, it's kind of got a bunch of different things going on in it. So this is the almost the whole piece is visible. There's a little bit down at the bottom that you can't see in this Q-snap that I've got it in. But um, so overall, you can see where I've done a lot of little bits. Down here is where I did my little parking. And then this most recent time when I've picked it up, I've been working up here on these tree branches and I actually started doing some of the back stitching. With my plan is to finish this, because it's four pages, so to finish this page here. The one thing that I am planning on sticking to my original plan on is the eagle. The eagle? The eagle. Eagle. Eagle! <laughs> no! I can't move my hand in the right direction. Um, I am going to not do anything on that and do that one separately last so that way um, if there's any kind of stitches sitting on top of other stitches the eagles in in the front kind of a thing um, this one is gridded this is my very first gridding attempt which I kind of came up with on my own um, and it's just gridded with black sewing thread and so there's probably several places where I've stitched through it so it's gonna be a pain in the butt to take out but oh well what can you do it's fun and I these 
This is my needle minder. I made it myself out of a button and some rare earth magnets, and I've got some other buttons I'm going to make. Um, because I'm only working on one piece at a time, I just switch the needle minder from piece to piece. I've got a ton of needles on it because when I'm parking, since I'm only, I do a 20 stitch row and then another 20 stitch row and then another 20 stitch row. And so I don't actually unthread my needles because I'm going to come back to them so quickly. So I'll have, you know, 20 <laughs> needles with threaded. So I just keep a large supply on my needle miners. So that's morning flight. Not my favorite project, but probably the one I'm farthest along on, and so one that I'm very excited to get done. Then I have another Dimensions kit. So this one I saw a picture of while I was working on Morning Flight, while I was doing that like single color of blue stuff. And I saw a picture of this. It's another Dimensions kit. It's Oriental Butterfly. And I was like, ooh, different colors, pretty colors, bright colors. Um, and then I found it on eBay really cheap. So it's my little little one. It's not necessarily something, it's a little bit of an unusual one for me, but it's very different from the other one and it's nice. Um, oh, the last one was on the 16 count Ada that came with the kit. This one's on 14 count actually printed Ada that came with the kit. And as you can see, it's grit. Ooh, I have stuff falling on me. This one's gridded with the metallic thread and I'm kind of working I was actually, instead of working in 20 stitch rows, I just did the whole row on this one because it's it's a really narrow stitched bit and then there's going to be like little stitched motifs down the sides. And right now, because there's two different butterfly wings, I'm doing like the center space between them. So that's what I got going on that one. It's a lot of fun. It goes really fast. Um, I think it's the 14 count. And so it's just waiting for its turn again. Not honestly the most exciting one. I'm just going to re-band this sucker so when I drop it over there it doesn't go everywhere. Oriental Butterfly. That one will be fun. Just the microphone. And then I am doing also the um, Save the Stitches Black Work pattern by Elizabeth Almond. It's the little, this is not actually a picture of it, but it's a picture that was on one of the little pattern pieces. Um, it's a little, um, it's a large, very large um, free pattern and a lot of people are doing it. It is really cool. I've always been kind of interested in black work since I saw some pictures of it, but until I saw this pattern, I had never seen a pattern that I wanted to do because it was kind of not my style, the types of patterns. So I have this sucker on a scroll frame. As you can see, I'm really not very far into it. This is only the first, this is block one, two, three, and four. Four, I believe, so I'm on five. Um, I did make a little mistake here. You can see this motif has got a red in it, and this motif has got red in it, and this motif is not supposed to be red. Um, I'm using red, green, and blue instead of the um, silver, gold, and um, copper that it's originally designed for, and uh, sometimes I can't keep track of what substitutes for what, apparently. Um, I'm not doing the beads where it wants beads. I'm doing um, little two over one crosses to make up the the bead instead. I just like the little texture of it. It's not too much, but it's it's just enough. Um, I'm doing this on 27 count white Linda fabric. I had never heard of it. Like I never saw anyone talking about it, but I found it on one two three stitch. I think um, it's called Linda apparently, um, possibly Zweigart. Uh, but it's, it's really nice. It's soft and um, very even and very nice to work on. And I wanted something just a tiny bit smaller than the 25 count that I'd seen people do and definitely not as small as the 32 count that I'd seen people do. So this is what I went with. This is where I'm at. It's, um, that's pretty good. I like it. And then this is not actually a cross stitch embroidery type of project, but I wanted one of those, um, you know, the DMC floss cards that have got the actual floss on them so that you can compare them because, um, you know, if I'm deciding I want to like design my own thing or if I'm just trying to pick out some colors out of what I already have to substitute for a little, little small, I've got a couple like little small, um, like greeting card type size things that I'm not doing currently, but that I might eventually, um, what am I trying to say? I might eventually do them, but just kind of with 
if it's a strawberry, I'm going to pick some reds that I already have kind of a thing, so I wanted to have those. But I didn't really want to pay for the thing. So I got this idea to make my own, which is what I'm going to do. I've got it in a sheet protector, so there's maybe a little bit of glare. And it's basically a piece of cardstock. These are just the colors that I had at the moment. Ooh, okay, those are, those are the little pieces. It's basically a piece of cardstock, and I put the little DMC numbers on it with little, um, and I cut little slits, if you can see. Can you see? There's these little slits. And then I made little little samples. So this is a little sample of 321, and it's woo, not in the screen. Not in the screen, cut my friend. So it says 321, and on the back it's been glued, so it doesn't look great. So this is the front. And basically, let me try putting that actually in the center of the screen. Basically, my idea is if I want to pick out some things, I can like pull out ones that look promising and hold them together and see how they look together. And then, because it says 321 on here and it says 321 on here, I can just slide it back in. Slide it back in, in theory. Actually, it works really well. Um, and it'll stay in that. And then what I can do, and the other thing this will do is I can see which ones I've either currently own or at least have used in the past. I think I calculated it's going to take me about five sheets, um, and since I already had sheet protectors and I have a ton of cardstock, I was like, sweet, that's pretty easy. Um, it just takes a little bit of time to do, and it's but it's pretty fun. So that's a thing that I'm doing for my cross stitch, so that I can have a little catalog of my colors without having to pay out for DMC's version of it. So anyway kind of nifty. I've only made one and I've not fully filled it in with all the ones that I have, so I need to make more and I need to fill them in. But I thought you might be interested in that if you were trying to figure out a way to get a DMC color card without paying. I don't even know what they want for it. It's not cheap. I looked a while back. So yeah, that is what I'm currently working on in the kind of cross-stitch embroidery black work type realm. Um, if that is... My knitting is falling on me. Um, if that's all you're interested in, then great. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching that. Let me know if you want to hear anything more about any of the things I mentioned. Um, and if not, now it's time for the knitting. So, knitting and crochet. Um, at the moment, those are the only yarny things. If I have other yarny things later, I'll add them. So, let me check what I'm doing here. Okay. This is the project that I'm currently working on almost exclusively because I'm so close to being done so close and I've been working on this for a while I can feel that I'm I, I'm ready for this to be done it is an area rug for my apartment it's a design the design is called ocean currents rug it's by Wendell straw designs um, I don't have a really good picture because I just printed out the part of the pattern that I needed Woo. okay gotta move things but you can see it's kind of this okay what the oh <laughs> okay it's kind of this like um, variegated wave patterns, ocean currents, so it's kind of supposed to be like this rolling wave pattern. And actually what's really cool is the pattern also includes instructions if you want to, you can either buy five different colors of yarn and use them, or it includes instructions to actually dye and spin your own five colors for it, which I thought was really cool because this is the, the original one was done like that. Um, the designer is super nice. I actually contacted her before I bought the pattern to make sure that I could size it up the way I wanted to because it hers was more of a small rug and I wanted an area rug and so she was super sweet about telling me you know letting me know that yes it would be possible and and letting me know how much of each yarn she used so I could calculate how much I was going to need and everything so I have a dog I'm not you know I'm not the nicest on my rugs anyway so instead of spinning my own, I bought Red Heart Super Saver in five shades of blue. Because that stuff will last forever and it's going to be under your feet, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. So, as you can see, mine's a little bit, I don't know if you could, how much you could see of that picture, the poor thing had a little water damage. Um, mine's a pretty vivid blue, hers is a little bit of a lighter blue, which is nice. It's kind of got this, like, wavy type pattern. Okay, let me try to show you this whole thing, okay? It is this long and this this tall. 
<laughs> it's going to get a little bit taller before I'm done. Not a lot, actually. Um, it's, it's, it's symmetrical. So this is where I'm at, and this is the other end. As you can see, let me line these suckers up. I've only got about this much still to go, which um, if I keep working on it at the rate that I have, I will definitely be done in two weeks. I might even be done in a week, which is awesome. I am super looking forward to having this down. I would have thought that, like, I was a little hesitant to knit my own rug because I was a little worried about it not being, I have um, wood laminate floors, I was a little worried about it not being soft enough, but this is actually done with a lot of slip stitches, so it's a very dense, um, poofy fabric. I love it. It's super soft when you put it down and step on it. Um, so yeah, I knit myself a rug. I'm almost done. I am so excited about being done. Um, I live in Texas. It's been hot this summer, as it always is in Texas. I have not wanted to work on this because it's been so heavy. It's finally getting cool, and I'm like, okay, I can finally tolerate having this in my lap to work on it. Uh, it is killer on your hands, though, because you work with two strands at a time, and two strands of Red Heart Super Saver. That's a lot, and it's heavy. It's... it's, it's <coughs> that was my dog barking at a person. Now she's sneezing at the person. My dog is slightly strange. Um, I will show her to you at the end of the video. Um, I have a lot of ends to weave in, though. But the good news is I don't think it'll, I honestly don't think it'll take very long. I've woven in this many ends um, previously, and it really didn't take me very long. Um, so yeah, close to being done. Super stoked. Currently working on that thing. Gonna not hit myself in the face with, okay, this is gonna just be dumped over here with its yarn. Oh, and the other nifty thing is I did, so I, like I said, the designer told me how much um, yarn she had used of each color so that way I could calculate how big my my um, how big I wanted it and how much I was going to need. I was a little bit worried that I was either going to not have buy, bought enough or I was going to have bought too many skeins and have some that I never use at all. Actually, I I need at least some of every single skein that I bought and I don't have any extra beyond that. So I'm super stoked. The calculations worked great. Her estimates were great and my ca my math worked out. So I'm so happy about that. Okay. That was the Ocean Currents rug. So looking forward to that being done. Okay. The next thing I'm going to show you is um, probably the project that if I focus on a I don't really focus on a project. Usually it takes a lot for me to be really inspired to stick to one project, but if there's another project I'm going to stick to, it's going to be this one. Um, it is a lace shawl. Where the heck is it? There it is. Ooh. It is a lace shawl. It is called Regrowth. Um, I don't have a great picture of it, but this is, this is kind of the type of lace that it is. That's my dog again. It's the time of day that people in the, this apartment are getting home from college, so they're walking past my windows, and she's like, oh my god, it's the end of the world. Um, it is by Toby McNutt. It is a free Ravelry download, which is really cool. It's one I've actually um, wanted to do for a while, but I haven't really thought that I would wear it. But um, a friend of mine, I've offered to do knit something for her, and this is what she picked, which is really cool because it was something I wanted to do. So... That is awesome. I am, oh, I'm this far along in it. So this is the top center. So it's going to be like this, basically. Ooh, and it's lace. So this will end up stretched out to that, like more like that. And this pattern will be stretched out to more like, more like this. And then this area will be stretched out more like this. Um, oh, there we go. There's the leaves. I have one more repeat of this leaf chart. A transition chart, another lace chart, and then the edge chart, and possibly a transition chart between the other lace chart and the edge chart. I don't remember. Um, I'm doing this in Knit Picks palette in grass, which is um, it's a lot brighter of a green than I think this is going to turn up on camera. It's like a bright, bright grass green, and it's actually has really good stitch definition. I was a little worried about it, but it seems to be working out great. Um, do, 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 do. I was going to say something else about this. I know I was. Oh, I am not a big believer in the idea of like beginner projects and non-beginner projects. I'm the type of person who's like, oh, I want to make that. I'm going to go learn all the steps I need to do to make it, and I'm going to make it. You know, that's what I want to do as a beginner. That's what I'm going to do. This is actually not a beginner project. Um, just because it's basically, they basically go, okay, you're going to do, this is going to be a shawl. This is how you're going to start it. 
you're going to do this for your selvage edges, you're going to do this for your central column, and here's the charts that you're going to do. So if you don't like reading charts, not a project for you. If you like reading charts and you like kind of complicated lace, awesome. A lot of fun. I'm almost to the ne needing a new ball. <laughs> So that is regrowth that I'm knitting for a friend of mine. Okay, the next knitting project that I have is down here. Mm. These are called, that is not the front page, this is the front page. These are the Rusamine Socks by Kawa Coffee. I believe that this is actually a free Ravelry download as well. Um, it is really nifty. Um, this this color work here is not done the way you would expect because with most col with with like intarsia or with um, stranded work, you're knitting with the other color. With this, it uses the uh, what is it called? Um, it's the rusamine technique. That's why they're rusamine socks. Um, and basically, what this is is all of these color bits are like laid. All of these color bits are laid in front of your knitting. So all of your knitting is with that background color, and the other colors are kind of laid in front as you go, which is really cool. So I have, I'm making these for me. Um, I have one sock done. It fits really well. It's not been blocked or anything. But as you can see, I didn't do, I didn't do the toe and the cuff collar work. I just did the side of the leg collar work. Whoa, one more time. And it looks awesome. I love it. Little um, heel flap, toe, nifty stuff. Um, where did I put my yarn labels? Okay. So my main color is this, I guess, online super sake. Molly is not, is like the color family that it is. It's the yellow one out of the Molly color family. Um, it's one of those yarns that doesn't really have colorway names as near as I can tell. So there's that. And then the black parts is this, <laughs> I found this ball of Regia yarn in a thrift store for 50 cents because they didn't know what it was and they thought it was just a small amount of yarn. So that was really cool. The only thing is when I bought it, I wasn't really thinking and I assumed it was gonna be one of the Regia four ply sock yarns. It is actually a three ply, which means that it is like a light fingering weight. So it works okay in this. I think I would have probably a little bit more coverage when the sock gets stretched if I had a four ply yarn instead of a three ply, you know, you can kind of see the yellow in between it because it's a slightly thinner yarn than this. But my plan had been to do these socks and then use the black as like some a different type of color work on a different pair of socks. Um, but because it's a light fingering and I was planning on using it with a fingering weight yarn, I don't think that's going to work out. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the remainder of that ball when I get done with it. But, oh, I don't think I showed you where I am. I am up to here. Um, these are, I think, size two cheapy craft store double points. I don't, Susan Bates, I guess, is probably the brand. Um, but they work for me. I have, <laughs> I have, so I have the gold ones, which are my original, and I had a set of five. I can only find three of those five. I have no idea where the other two were. I know I had all of them because the first sock was knit all on them. And then when I went to the second sock, I only had three of those five. So I had to buy another set. And for whatever reason, they changed the color so it's like a rose color instead of the gold color. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? I don't know. But anyway, so those are socks. Um, they will be my first, they won't be quite my first knitted socks because I've done like a slipper sock type of a thing, but they'll be my first like adult sized fingering weight socks for me. Um, and I'm super excited about them. Okay, so we got the socks. Okay, the next one is a crochet project. Everything else has been knitting so far. Um, I am working on, I don't have a picture to show you of the final project because it was a, um, it's like a photo tutorial for a crochet along type of project. So it's really, it's on a website and it's really hard to print out. So um, it's called Sophie's Universe. It's basically like a center out, um, mandala blanket. Um, the designer is Dedry Eus, possibly. Y U Y S is how you say, spell the last name, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, I am doing it in size 10 crochet cotton because that's what I happened to have. Um, 
And as you can see, I have this like sparkly red one. Whoa, okay, center stuff. I have this like sparkly red and I had this dark green and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this in Christmas colors. And we're gonna see, cause this was something that I picked up secondhand. I was like, oh, nifty, I'll just take that. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do the whole blanket with this or if I'm gonna run out. So it may end up just being like a little doily to put on, um, on a table or something Christmassy. I'm not really a big Christmas prep person, but I'm probably going to offer it to my mom because she does Christmas decoration stuff every year. So, anyway, um, I'm not a huge crochet fan. I find that it's really hard on my wrists, but I really, really like this one. I think it's because it's not the same stitches over and over. There's different stitches in every single round, and every single round is different. So there's less repetitive wrist motion that would cause me trouble. Drop that over the couch. Okay. And the last two projects that I have in my kind of knitting crochet category are both knit projects and they are um, scrap projects. So the first one is called the Beekeeper's Quilt, um, which it's, it, it's little pieces that you sew together. So I've got this little cookie jar to hold them. So cute. Um, it's a lot of knitters have done this project. It was pretty popular. Um, I was never a huge fan. Basically, you make these little hexagons and you would stuff them and then you would have this like little bumpy quilt that looked like a honeycomb. And that's, that's cool and all, but I didn't really like the look of them stuffed. And then I saw a couple pictures of people who had done um, them without the stuffing and I really liked that. Oh, and I'm not sure I mentioned the designer is Tiny Owl Knits. Tiny Owl Knits. For some reason, I always get her design mixed up with another designer. But anyway, I've been making these little hexagons. I love, I have a little like makeup bag and I keep my needles and my scrap sock yarn. This is fingering weight sock yarn. I keep that in that bag. And then anytime I'm like waiting for a bus or if I'm gonna get to campus early for one of my classes and I'm gonna be waiting for the class to start, I'll just knit. Um, they're little, they're easy to take around. That gray one I showed you is I made several of them. This is a Regia four ply, like Heather gray type of yarn. I made a pair of gloves for my brother with it, just fingerless gloves. And I ended up needing to get two balls, but I used like only a little bit of the second one. So I made a bunch of the gray ones. And then because I was getting bored of gray, I actually dyed, let me see if I can find some of the other ones that I did. I dyed it with Kool-Aid, uh, not Kool-Aid, with, um, food coloring, a bunch of different like colors. So this is like a dark one. Oh, that one comes out really nicely on camera. Um, and this one's one of my favorites. I did a little rainbow and it's on the gray, so it's very muted, but I, I just dyed it um, with um, food coloring and vinegar for the acid because it can be dyed with acid dyes. So I have a bunch of little like multicolor ones, subdued ones that I did there. And then I was running out of that and um, I happened to find at a thrift shop a bunch of like sock yarn ends that someone had clearly knit socks and just donated the ends of their yarn. So I bought them for like 25 cents a ball or something. And I've got a bunch of those now to make different little hexagons. And whenever I get done with those um, Rusamine socks, I will be using the yellow definitely and possibly the black to do some more of these. So I've got this little my plan is to let this get all the way full and then like dump it out, mix it up, and then sew them together kind of randomly and then fill it up again and keep adding things to it. I don't really know how big I want to make it. I'm loud. I'm kind of hoping that it, I... Uh, don't fall, projects. Um, I'm kind of hoping eventually to get it big enough to be like a bedspread on a double bed because I can tell that it's going to be very heavy for its weight because of its two, the way they're constructed, it's basically two layers of the yarn, the, the knitted fabric, and I like heavy blankets, so I think it would be cool to make it as a blanket, but that's going to take a really long time. So, the other thing, the, the other scrap project that I'm working on is the 10 stitch blanket by Frankie Brown. And I'm doing this one with my kind of worsted Aran weight acrylic yarn scraps. So as you can see, there's no effort to be particularly like color specific or color families or anything. I am simply 
knitting this sucker and it's going to be really co colorful and it's garter stitch so it's pretty squishy um, and when I wash it a lot of these are going to soften up a lot so it'll be pretty nifty. I think probably I'm going to end up donating this to like a homeless shelter or um, a women's shelter or someplace where they would have like a kid that would want a colorful blankie. I think that would be cool. And so what's nifty about the 10 stitch blanket if you've never heard of it, it's also free on Ravelry. Um, is that you're only ever working 10 stitches at a time. So you basically work these 10 stitches and you just kind of attach them and then you turn a corner and then you like attach them along here and then you turn a corner and you attach them along here. So it's really good for scraps because you can just work a little, obviously I didn't have very much of this yarn. So I just worked like a little bit um, and I have it on a stitch holder and the stitch holder tells me I'm working this with size eight needles. So that way I can, I never forget when I pick it back up. And so, you know, next time I have a acrylic yarn that's gonna work into it, I will just add that. All right, I believe <coughs> that was my dog again, again. Lily, come here, hush baby. She's on the other arm of the couch. That's where she likes to sit and stare out the window and bark at people. So anyway, I believe that is everything that I wanted to talk about knitting, crochet, yarny wise. So, if that was all you cared about, awesome, you've seen it. Um, if you are interested in the sewing projects and quilting projects, that's going to start now. Or rather, it's going to start as soon as I get a drink, because I've been talking for a while. Okay, sewing, quilting. If that's what you want, you're in the right spot. So, my first two sewing projects are... Um, they're kind of similar, they're kind of, they're really related. They're, they're kind of the same idea. They are these kind of soft sculpture hand puppet kits. I, I believe that the designer is this dinosaur thing. Um, I think, I think they may have been associated with a natural science museum. I believe that my grandmother gave these to my parents like a long time ago, like I remember these being on my mom's sewing supply shelf as long as I can remember pretty much. Um, and then I was the one who was like, hey, can I work on those? And she actually had, there's actually two other ones that were like dinosaur soft sculpture, like soft stuffed toys that I've already made. And now I've got two puppets that I'm in the process of making. So I don't know a lot about them other than the fact that I happen to have these kits. So you want one I'm sorry I don't have any idea where you would get one so this is the dragon and he is basically gonna be like a quilted dragon puppet thing and I think that I'm yeah I'm done with all of my quilting so you can see he comes in these pieces like this so this is like his head and I've quilted his scales so you just kind of machine quilt along the scale lines he's got a little fluffy in him and then um, He's on the back, and then the next step for me is I left all of these, I left all these tails on him when I just, I just, to quilt it most efficiently, I just went to the, whenever I got to the end, I just, you know, left the little thing, trimmed it, and did the next one. So I'm going to pull them all to the back, knot them, and trim them off, because this is going to be the inside. And so I've got at least one piece where I have done that, somewhere in here. Nope, not in there. Well, I was going to show you, oh, like this is a finished one. Like it's had all of its little dangly ends, it's, it's the dragon's tail. It's had all its little dangly ends pulled to the back and knotted and neatly trimmed. So I need to sit down and do that. And then once I do that, I can actually start assembling, which will be awesome. So he's going to be really cool. And then, so this is my dragon puppet. Guess what the other puppet is? What well, goes with dragons? It's not a maiden, but that's close. It is a knight on horseback. And this is partly cut out because there was a pattern piece on it. This is a little this is more complicated than the dragon. The dragon had all of its stuff pre-printed on the fabric. This one has got more fabric that you had to like cut out yourself. A lot of it's pre-printed, but not all of it. So it's a little knight, hand puppet. Dude. And so far. I got the horse. So you can see, here's my fingers. He's a little puppet, a little horse. 
it was really, really creepy when I had these separate pieces where, like, his eye was one piece and his mouth was a different piece. So creepy. But he's now together, although his knight is um, in pieces. His knight is arms and legs at the moment. That's another arm. Where's his leg? There's his leg. I got a leg. So my next step is I have these little little pantaloons that are going to go on the legs. And so he'll have this little, like, pantaloon leg thing going. And then after I get done with that, I get to actually put him together. And he will sit on the horse's back. So that'll be nifty. Um, I don't really have plans for these after I finish them. I wanted to make them because since they were kits, um, oh, and these bags are ones that I've made myself. All of my project bags I've made myself. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I don't, I thought they would be nice ones to, like, kind of practice sewing more with and practice using my sewing machine with, and they've been really helpful for that. I've learned a lot from just doing them, um, but I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with them when I get done with them. I'm probably going to kind of give them back to my parents and my, um, little brother and just kind of let them, really it's my parents, give them back to my parents and let them kind of keep them in the house somewhere. Um definitely going to let my grandmother see them because she was the one who gave my parents the kits. But beyond that, I don't really have huge plans for them. So the other kind of sewing type project that I'm currently working on is, my, oh, that's what I'm seeing next to me. It's that. That's annoying me. Um, there went something else falling over because now they aren't holding each other up. Um, my dog likes to lie on blankets and kind of scrunch them up and then lie on the scrunched up bits. Why she finds that comfortable, I don't know. But I wanted to make her a little like quilted blanket that she could have when she was on the couch cushions next to me. She's not super fond of the couch cushions just because I think they're super flat and she can't scrunch anything up. So I was going to make her this little quilt. And this is, I'm currently in the process of basting the quilt top to the batting and the backing. So it's going to be a little bit hard to show it to you without messing it up. So forgive me while I figure out how to unroll this a little bit. Well, I can show you some of it. So this is the quilt back, and this is the quilt pieces. It's... I'm hoping you can see that. Um, it's just kind of a basic diagonals in columns. Um, I found the pattern for the quilt top on some, like, 101 quilting patterns type of website and I don't remember what it was called I don't remember where I got it from um, it's been a little while I am planning on hand quilting this because um, I've never done that and I think that would be fun and I've decided based on the quilting that I did on the dragon that I don't particularly care for machine quilting it's just a little bit too fast for me so I am going to hand quilt this sucker eventually um, the fabric was all gotten secondhand thrift store so it's kind of whatever colors I could find that basically went together so you know not necessarily my top color choices but it'll do it's the dog's quilt really she's gonna get a hand quilted quilt she can suck it up and when it comes to the colors <laughs> so that's my quilt that I'm working on I will reroll that more neatly later and that's what I'm working on for my sewing I don't have a Ton of sewing projects. It's kind of one of my newer things that I've gotten into. So, sewing. Thumbs up. Um, so, done with sewing. If you're just interested in sewing, head on out. The next thing that I want to talk about is kind of my other projects. Um, I don't have as many as I thought I was going to have, to be honest with you. I do have a couple different, like, random things going. So the first thing that I've got going, again, alphabetically, is, um, oh, I opened it to the right spot. So this book is the, it's the Com Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Needlework. I got this, oh, I don't know, I was like 12 or 13 or something. And it's where I learned to knit. It's where I learned to crochet. Um, my mom taught me to cross stitch, but this taught me all of the other embroidery that I know. Um, so it's really nifty. It's got a ton of different things in there. And when I was kind of like in my early teens, I did a lot of like doing little samplers out of all the different things they've got in there. So, but one of the ones that I 
kind of thought that I wanted to do but never actually got around to doing is um, a type of lace called um, fillet netting. You basically make this little net out of some like crochet cotton thread um, string and then you embroider over it to make this lace. And this project in here is this kind of like uh, fish thing. It's a fish, as you can see. Um, and I wanted to do that since I got the book. And it wasn't until now that I started kind of working on it. My pl they have you do it in like five different shades of blue. My plan is to do five diff or three different shades of, of kind of a gray with kind of a little bit of a silver sheen for the fish itself um, so that it kind of looks like a silver fish and then do the border around the fish in like black and white because I think that would I think those colors are colors that I would blue's my favorite color but I don't necessarily want like random blues all over my walls I would rather have like black and white kind of stuff so at the moment whoa there that goes <laughs> more stuff falling over um, at the moment, all that I've got is this little bit of the netting that I'm working on. Uh, it's going to be a while because that's about, that row is I believe 8 squares of net and I need to go until I've got 57 squares of net and you add one square each row that you knot. So that'll be a while. It's basically though you just knot the, the um, you have a little shuttle that holds your thread you have this is a double pointed knitting needle um, that make, can, makes all of that makes sure that these are all the right the same size and you just knot the the thread around the needle and onto the previous knots which is probably a bad explanation but I've only just started doing this so I'm not sure what the best way to explain it is um, but anyway I am working on that and when I get done with that I will embroider the fish on it and we will see how that goes but that's like the newest thing that I've learned. Super exciting. And then let's see. Oh yeah, I have some. Um, I have some embroidery floss that I don't. I, I like got it from my grandmother and my mother, but not all of it was labeled. And some of it I know that I got labeled and then I lost the label. Um, so I don't know all the colors they are. So I was like trying to figure out what to do with the extra ones. So I'm nodding at the moment. Let me make sure. Yes, I'm showing you the front. This is going to be a friendship bracelet in pinks and purples out of some unknown color embroidery floss that I like was like, oh, this is pretty. I'll just combine these colors together. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this because pink and purple are really not my colors. I'm probably going to find a friend of mine who's got like a five-year-old girl and give it to her or something. Um, but, you know, it's fun. It's actually surprisingly fun to do the knotting. I did a little bit of macrame, and so this is kind of like fewer types of knots, but I like the outcome better th than the macrame. And then the final thing that I wanted to, to show you that I do is I've been doing, I've been making beads out of paper. Um, and so basically you cut these long strips and you roll them up, and then you end up with these little beads. Woo little bead. They bitty beads. Here's one. I like this one a lot. And these have been glazed so you can see they're all shiny and they feel a lot like a glass bead because they've got a, like a thick layer of glaze on top of them. And these are actually made out of um, magazines. I cut like you know National Geographic type colorful picture magazines up. I've got a big old cup that I've just barely started to fill and I'm rolled these these up, glazed them. I have these little beads that I like to make um, like stretch bracelets out of basic stuff. And then I've got some that I've rolled but I haven't glazed them yet. These are all, check them out, they're rainbow. And then I've got some rainbow ones going the other way. So I've got rainbows that have got blue in the middle and I've got rainbows that have got red in the middle, or purple in the middle, I should really say. And these are actually from, um, I used to be really into origami, and I've got a lot of origami paper left over, and I had this origami paper that I thought looked really cool, that was like rainbow colors in stripes all up and down the paper, but the problem with that is that if you do the origami, you don't end up with something that looks like a rainbow, you end up with something that's got like a lot of red and a little bit of purple on it, and that's kind of boring. 
So I cut those strips up and I it, the paper up into strips and I instead use them to make these little beads, which are nifty. And then I need to um, I need to seal them and then glaze them to make them look like they're kind of glass, although they're obviously not actually glass, but they kind of look like it. And they're really pretty and I like them. So yeah, that's all I'm currently working on. <laughs> And I've got some other things that I do. I think the reason that I thought I was going to have more other projects is because um, there are other things that I do. Like I've just started watercoloring, but I don't, I'm watercoloring like little things at the moment. So I don't have like anything in progress to show you. And since my plan was to show you what I had in progress, I don't really have anything to show you. I'm sure at a later date, if I'm doing, if I do more videos, then I'll have like, oh, look, I finished this, this watercolor to show you. But um, I have a number of, Lily, hush. My dog's about to bark. <laughs> um, so I have a number of things to show you like that. And then, oh yeah, speaking of my dog, I'll show you my dog. Because who doesn't want to see this face? Lily, look at the camera. Oh yeah, my dog is really cute. I'm telling you. Um, she's old. She's probably a Chihuahua Pomeranian or Chihuahua Papillon cross. I got her from the shelter about four years ago, and she was probably about eight when I got her, so, you know, who knows. But she's very cute, and you may hear her barking. If you watch my knitting section, you definitely heard her barking if I didn't edit that out, which I might have, so we will see. Anyway, that's what I do. That's what I've got going on. Probably later videos, if I continue to make videos, will be more of like, this is what I worked on this week or this month or... I'm not going to make any commitments to a filming schedule because as soon as I make a commitment to that type of thing, it stresses me out. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, like I said earlier, if you have any questions or comments or you want me to make a more in-depth video on something that I talked about briefly today, just let me know. And I hope that you enjoyed watching and that it was something, if you're the t if you like me, like watching these things kind of as background entertainment while you're um, crafting, I hope that it was entertaining. <laughs> anyway, I will probably see you later in a future video. Bye!